Alright, today is a very exciting day for me. It is Criterion Box Day. What happened is that a few months ago the Criterion Collection did a uh, sale and I placed an order with them. Now this order was delayed because I had a mix of older catalog items and new releases. And yesterday, this past Tuesday, they had the new releases released. So that means we are going to discuss them. And anyone who is worrying about what I'm going to talk about should be aware that there are two things in this box. Movies. Japanese movies. You have been forewarned. Uh, that said, we're going to keep this under five minutes. Okay, let's open the box. I know what's in here, so it's not Christmas. Now, um, I'm going to discuss these in uh, more detail as to uh, why I wanted them. But what we've got here are five DVDs. Pale Flower, Topsy Turvy, Diabolique, The River, and Hands Over the City. Uh, I should start again and give you a uh, more specific warning. French movies and Japanese movies. You've been forewarned. Um, well, they're classic. It's not like we've got uh, uh, anything uh, particularly uh, scandalous in here. Uh, I was not one of the people who pre-ordered or was even interested in the uh, Fat Girl Blu-ray or even the DVD. So. Here's what they packaged this rather well, which uh, is uh, nice to see considering the uh, problems I've been having with Amazon shipping, uh, namely them not knowing what to do or at least being probably inconsistent with what they're doing. So, um, really, let's get this ball rolling and start with the first DVD, which is Pale Flower by Masaru Shinoda. Now this is a, a film I saw a while ago from the original uh, Home Vision disc and uh, I guess this is one of the few instances where I double dip. But uh, this has got new transfer, new extras, and a gorgeous cover. Um, this is basically jazzy, film noir sort of thing, very dark photography. Uh, the second time I saw this a few weeks ago uh, to review it I was really taken with the score by Toru Takamitsu because it was just Takamitsu. Um, it just added to the doom and the uh, sort of uh, dead end fate of uh, of the film at hand. And um, the thing that uh, I I think really made it particularly interesting was the beginning of the film, where it's the score with uh, shots of all these uh, all these crowds out in uh, Tokyo. And um, just this, uh, just this atmospheric setting of the scene, uh, I guess it, uh, I, I guess really um, impressed me because when I'd earlier seen the face of another, it had another sort of, another uh, sort of scene setting a uh, sequence of uh, urban uh, dislocation, space, um, setting like that. But back to the story of this. Um, as per the back, it says, uh, Ayakuza, fresh out of prison, comes entangled with a beautiful and enigmatic gambling addict. What at first seems a redemptive relationship ends up leading him further down the criminal path. Um, yeah, film noir. A guy is a criminal, stays a criminal, goes back to prison. Um, I guess it's a pessimistic film. I found it more or less interesting for... Um, the look at Japanese society at that time. So anyway, uh, this was the first one, and I, I'm really, really quite excited to to have, it, including um, commentary from uh, Peter Greeley, uh, uh, talking about Toru Takamitsu, including a uh, new interview of Shinoda. But um, this this film, I'm very, very happy to have finally. Uh, and next, of course, we have Topsy Turvy from Mike Lee. This is a film that I have really been meaning to see for really for years now, to be honest. Uh, I remember uh, when I was first watching uh, Roger Ebert's show, 
Um, Ebert had chosen as, the, as his film of the year being John Malkovich, and uh, co-host um, was Janet Maslin, uh, because of course Siskel had passed away, uh, co-host um, Janet Maslin of New York Times had chosen Topsy Turvy as her film of the year. I, I was just really, really, uh, really struck by, you know, by the difference of this, this modern American film, you know, supposedly uh, postmodern restructuring narrative, and this seemingly traditional uh, Victorian set film about the making of The Mikado by Gilbert and Sullivan. And um, it was a period film, so I had to see it. I mean, I love the films like Mass King George Not Day, so I had to see another uh, British film uh, set in the past. Um, and I really never really caught up with this until uh, this year, but a uh, local video store had Copy Top Story and VHS. I was like, oh, we gotta take that, we gotta see it. And then Netflix had uh, Topsy Turvy. And then this, you know, got, got, um, got picked up by Criterion. And I thought, oh, this will be perfect because uh, new, uh, it's a brand new set, uh, 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 new transfer, commentary with Mike Lee, conversation between Lee and his musical director Gary Yershon. And I, I was just more like, well, this is the film I have, and also Criterion was basically selling for uh, more than 50 percent off when I bought from, so I'd be dumb not to get it. And and considering um that this is a three-hour-long film that includes rehearsal and performance and basically is about uh, the making of uh, the Mikado, this self-reflexive film seemed like something I just, I just had to see. It just, it just really caught on to different things that I like. That period film's also about uh, the making of, uh, of productions, uh, the creative process. And it it just seems like a like a really good film to get into. So I'm really glad to have this one. This one I've actually been waiting for a long time because this one was released about um, about a month ago. So it's been a little more painful waiting for this one because I remember seeing Barnes Noble. I was like, oh, I really want to see this. I really want to see this. I didn't see it on Amazon, but you know I <laughs> really wanted to get a bargain, so I waited. And I'm glad I finally have it now. Uh, the reason I kept wanting to see it is because it's three hours long. I mean, come on. It's not like you can just sit down and spend your evening watching this movie. It's kind of something that seems to have a little more time investment than, say, uh, Pale Flower, which is a little shorter. But um, I've got it now, so we're finally going to sit down and put that time to use. But I, I really, really look forward to this. I mean, and again, as people, uh, other people kind of times like, Mike Lee doing a film about the Victorians? Really? I mean, Mike Lee has done things that are a bit more contemporary uh, that I've seen. But by all means, this is a piece with his work, and I'm. Ooh, I really want to open this right now. Um, but I'm really looking forward to watching this one, too. Um, warning French coming ahead. Maybe if you haven't turned this off by now, maybe this is pointless. But this one is uh, Diabolique by Clouseau. And uh, this one I really wanted to have because um, I considered getting the British DVD because it had commentary from uh, film star Kelly Conway, who, by the way, wrote this wonderful book called Chantus in the City, um, which, which is basically about... Uh, it, it's, it's a gender study book, but it's about uh, the French Chantus uh, in various French films at the time, uh, particularly the 1930s, although it goes a little uh, little beyond that period of time. So, um, getting some more information from Kelly Conway about French film just was an incredibly enticing uh, proposition. Uh, but also, uh, Diabolique, I've heard about its influence on Hitchcock, um, its uh, status in French cinema, it, its, its, its general reputation as a thriller. Um, so I really wanted to see it, and th this is a reissue of an earlier Criterion DVD, so they really tripped it out, they gave it this, this beautiful cover, and um, again, Criterion had it on sale, and I, I just absolutely uh, had to go after this, because um, I'm incredibly intrigued by this movie. So, um, I now have my copy, it'll be, it'll be nice to see, I thought of a Clouseau's uh, Wages of Fear, which I still haven't seen because it's over two hours long, but I was 
uh, really happy to get some more of Clouseau to uh, once again uh, continue my film education, especially with uh, such a film that uh, I've heard has been uh, so renowned. And uh, look, look at this cover here. And uh, picture on the disc is quite nice too. I mean, this is the sort of thing Criterion's renowned for. But anyway, I'm really quite quite happy to have this movie. Oh, the the beauty of the booklet here is great. Black, gray, white, some red, some red, red on the end pages. This is this is designed with uh, quite a flair for uh, for the uh, eye catching. Uh, I'm catching detail here. Design and illustrations, David Plunker of Spur Design. Just, just amazing looking film. It's just so beautiful. Um, so it's also quite nice to have this. Um, also an interview with uh, film critic Kim Newman. Amazing guy who also uh, is quite knowledgeable, thought, knowledgeable about Val Luton films, and a very nice essay from Terence Rafferty, who uh, did another great essay for Kurosawa's film, uh, Stray Dog. So, uh, this one I'm very quite happy to have. Um, also, back to French here is The River by Jean Renoir. Now, I, I got to see this film through Interlibrary Loan a few years ago. Uh, through university when I was in Virginia, and I was really quite impressed by the film. I like Jean Renoir films in general, but for this one, I had my doubts because, like, he's in India, is he a little out of his element? You know, I'm used to basically everything French he did. I mean, I've seen The Southerner, which he did in America, but, um, a again, you know, classic period Jean Renoir is where I'm uh, particularly interested. Uh, Rules of the Game, Crime of Monsieur Lange, films like that. But for this one, it seemed like he was like going out of his territory. Um, but um, not at all. This is very much of a piece with Jean Renoir's work. Um, so it's really great. It's really quite great to see it. And again, it's it's. I mean, it's nice to collect DVDs. Of, per of particular film director's work and have a nice big collection so you can study it at will or just plain enjoy it. And this one really impressed me. I remember the introduction on this with um, Martin Scorsese who had called the film his favorite Technicolor film um, with the right shoes. So when I first saw this introduction for the film I was like, Scorsese loves this one, the Technicolor film? Well, there, there's, there's a uh, eye to uh, uh, pay attention to, and I watched the film. It's very, very lovely. It looked, looked really quite beautiful. I was really impressed by the film, and of course, this was um, something I, I really wanted to get since then. And um, this is um, uh, one of uh, Renoir's works that I really did quite enjoy. And um, before I forget. Um, this is a uh, film based on memoir by Rumor Godin, uh, or Godin, I forget exactly how you say uh, her name, who was the author of the source material for The Red Shoes. So again, it's nice to have another film of Europeans going to India. But this one was, was really quite interesting. I'm sorry, Rumor Godin was the uh, writer of the source material for Black Narcissus, not The Red Shoes. I'm very sorry. Um, but, um, that, um, that was my mistake. But I, I, re I really like this film. It's a really great presentation of Jean Renoir's uh, genius as a director. And it was nice when I finally saw the film and went through the supplements and read about it to really have um, another excellent film by Jean Renoir about, uh, about, um, about uh, India. And I'm not particularly interested in India, but Renoir's presentation of the characters and the culture around it really intrigued me. So it's it, it's nice to sit back and enjoy a story uh, made by someone who is making it for the first time as well. I mean, this was the first time he went to India. So it's very, very lovely film. And
and I'm really happy to finally have this one as well. And uh, it's such an excellent presentation of the film, too. Um, uh, essays from Ian Christie, a Palin Pressburger expert, and Alexander Sasanska, a uh, Renoir expert. So, just the booklet alone was great. So, I was probably quite happy to uh, finally have this. And our last film, Warning Italian. Oh wait, no, I gave a French and Japanese warning. Never mind. Uh, anyway, uh, another film that I'd actually been interested in for a while is uh, Hands Over the City by Francesco Rossi. And I've got um, other films of his. Uh, Subtor Giuliano. Um, did he make Il Posto and Il Fidanzante? I think so. I'm pretty sure he did. If if not, my apologies. But I've got those DVDs too. So, with that in mind, it's it's nice to have more Italian cinema, more uh, neo-realistic sort of cinema. And uh, for this one in particular, I was always interested because there's always something about how Italians make these sort of political thrillers that are just amazing films. The way they're the way they're politically committed, the way they're morally committed, the way they use narrative, uh, the acting, the structure, everything to make a very compelling sort of a, a film uh, about the country. And, I mean, I think of other films uh, like um, Sotor Giuliano, uh, The Conformist by Bertolucci, I, I, um, Rossellini's films, of course. I was I, I always would just like kind of wonder how are the Italians so good at, at making these films, these uh, politically committed films. Uh, I, I, I just thought maybe it was uh, interest in right and wrong and, you know, this, this sort of narrative uh, action they could do. Um, it wasn't until recently they hit me. Their commitment to political throwers, their ability to do these uh, uh, amazing films, um, these political thrillers, these films interested in politics, interested in society as a whole, interested in politicians, police, criminals, legal behavior, stuff like that. What I realized is that they were so good at this because they had the heritage of neorealism to guide them. Now it seems blindingly obvious that th that this was a fountainhead of 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 interest and technique for these films, but I just kept wondering about it, like, is this, is this just an Italian thing, interest in, interest in such things? No, nope, it's neorealism. So, it's uh, good to have uh, this film. I've uh, been interested in it for a while, so when that criteri Criterion sale came around, I decided to jump on this, because I was thinking, well, who knows if Barnes & Noble is going to have another 50 percent sale. Excuse me. Um, and again, I, I had my get this, and I was really interested to 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 get this film. It it, it just seemed like another film I want to see. And of course, it's got Rod Steiger in it, who is a fascinating actor. So I was just kind of interested in seeing his performance in um in that as well. But uh, this film in particular got all sorts of extras. Look at this, two discs. Very nice, very handsome presentation to have. Just very beautiful. Th uh, sorry, I'm very interested in uh Ooh, look at this. Old school uh, Criterion booklet from 2006. I don't have a neat little... Uh, postcard in here if I've got that, so I guess they've had this in storage for a while, so um, that's that but, um, anyway these are the uh, films I've got here and uh, I'm going to have a uh, rather happy month watching them so it's a uh, so wonderful to have these films now, especially, especially Pale Flower and the River and Hands Over the City. Thank you, Criterion. Thank you very much.